Good evening, friends. We'll start with today's session of Kent's philosophy. And we're discussing regarding the first chapter from Kent's philosophy, that is the Sikh. His understanding regarding the first aphorism from the organ of medicine, the physician's iron only mission is to restore the Sikh to help to cure as it is termed. And out of which he has selected two important words, the Sikh. And why Hanneman, Dr. Samuel Hanneman, considered the terminology the Sikh. That's what he is explaining. <clears throat> Mostly, when you think about it, you have to understand exactly what he wants to say. And Ken tries to explain all these concepts. He explains them. The Sikh means it's the man who is Sikh. And who is the man? The man has twofold existence. One existence is external body in the form of physics. And another existence is internal man, which is dynamic, invisible. It is the principle which enters inside the human being, gives him his own identity and who has who is having its own will and understanding. That will and understanding is a part and parcel of ex in expression of the internal human being reflecting in the body and your body performs according to it. So, whole thing is related with the internal man. Whatever is there, whatever any alteration happens inside, gets reflected externally on the face of the human being, in the body language of the human being. And that, that thing, Kent has to explain, that it is not the part which is sick, it is the something internal which is sick, because of which that part is expressing its own disease. So every pathology is the result of disturbance at, in this internal man. And if that is the original disease, we should not give so much of importance to the pathology directly, which is focused by the allopaths. They consider pathology as a disease. They consider pathology as a cause of disease. And both things are false. Pathology is the end product of the disease. Disease is prior in the internal man and that is reflected ultimately in the form of some physical problem, in the form of, say, in the form uh, at cellular level or a tissue level. And this is what is called as a uh, original disease that expressing externally in the form of some pathology. So, these are end products and those one should not take into consideration. And that's why Hanuman have you, uh, Dr. Kent has explained this concept in an elaborative manner that if you want to see exactly the man, you have to find it out, his face's countenance. And he has given a simple example. How is the face of the villain and how is the face of the hero? The villain's face is nothing but the expression of his will and understanding. And same is true, the hero's face is manifestation of his internal will and understanding. So, the problem lies at this level, that is original Sora. And if it is disturbed, if it is diseased, that reflected in the form of disease. So, that's what the sickness is, which is prior to the tissue change, prior to the cellular change. And that's what one has to understand. So we have learned up to this. Let us go with the next paragraph from the Kent's philosophy. It is the sole duty of the physician to heal the sick. What is it? It is the sole duty to heal the sick, not the his parts. It is not his sole duty to heal the results of sickness, but the sickness itself, when the man himself has been restored to the health, there will be restored harmony in the tissue and in the activity. So, for example, if a patient comes to you with some fever and you have given an antipyretic to the patient, the fever is disappeared, the person is lying in bed, he is not able to perform any work. So, whether he is in harmony, he is not in harmony, you have not brought him to normal. You have just removed one symptom of the 
to with the help of antipathic measure. And that's why it is not called to be fear. But if you understand the reason behind fear, if you treat the internal man which is diseased, then if you give a remedy to the patient, even though the fever never comes down, but he is still active, he can able to perform and gradually fever takes care of and he is in a functioning condition. That is what is called as an health. So when homeopathy deals, it deals with the man and not with only the primary manifestations of the disease. It is not just, it is not just the pathology. It is something which is internal, which is disease. Then the sole duty of the physician is to put in order the interior of the economy. That is the will and understanding conjoined. So you have to treat that disturbed internal disharmony, which is like which lies in the will and understanding. Tissue changes are of the body and are the results of the disease. And this is what he is explaining again and again. Whatever the tissue change is there, that is an expression of the disease or result of the disease. They are not the disease. See, sentences are big form with this. They are not the diseases. Hanuman once said, there are no diseases but the sick people. Hanuman, what he said? There are, there, is, there are no diseases but the sick people from which it is clear that Hanuman understood the, that the so-called diseases, examples, Bright's disease, liver disease, etc., where but the grosser forms of the disease results, vice versa, appearances of the disease. So any pathology which comes out because of this internal disturbance of the will and understanding, because of disturbance of the internal man, reflects in the form of some pathology. That pathology is not the disease, that is the end product of the disease. There is first disorder of the government is making it simple. There is first the disorder of government and this proceeds from within outward until we have pathological changes in the tissue. The practice In the practice of medicine today, the idea of government is not found and tissue changes only are taken into the account. So he is explaining what is wrong is internal at the level of government and if it happens, it reflects externally. This concept is not there with the allopathy and that's why they consider every pathology as a local pathology. They, and because of which their treatment aim, aims at the local level. So concept is very clear that this is always lies at the internal level. He who considers disease results to be the disease itself and expects to do away with this as disease is insane. Insane means mad. What he says, if one considers that external pathology is the disease, then he is not understanding what exactly the disease is. So he who considers disease results to be the disease itself and expects to do away with this this as disease is insane. It is an insanity in medicine, an insanity that has grown out of milder forms of mental disorders in science, crazy dreams. This is what the modern science is. They say the disease, gangrene is the disease. No, gangrene is not the disease. Whatever you observe that gangrene is the result of disease. Result, the, the disease has happened at the dynamic plane, reflecting in the form of a gangrene, reflecting in the form of necrosis, reflecting in the form of fatty degeneration, reflecting in the form of chromeronephritis. Many, many, all those, those are the products of the diseases. Same is true when they consider bacteria as the cause of disease. What he says, see, the bacteria are the results of the disease. Very important sentence. In the course of time, we will be able to show perfectly that the microscopical little fellows are not the disease cause, but that they come after, that they are scavengers. What are scavengers? Scavenger manje. Scavenger. So they are scavengers accompanying the disease and that they are perfectly harmless in every respect. There are many bacteria inside our body. In the gut, there are millions of bacteria. In fact, because of which we are healthy. Because of which 
our GI system remains in a healthy state. If they are not there, the allopaths see the concept that they consider that bacteria are the causes of diseases and then they give the antibiotic, kills the bacteria and again orally gives the bacteria. See, see the controversy over there. This is very important. One must understand this concept that bacteria are not the causes of diseases. In fact, they help the human being. But once you deceased, the many bacteria grows over there. They are the products of disease. That's why he says they are the outcome of disease, are present whenever, wherever the disease is and is by and by the microscope. It has been discovered that every pathological result has its corresponding bacteria. The old school considers this the cause, but we will be able to show that disease cause is much more subtle than anything that can be shown by a microscope. We'll be able to show you by process of reasoning, step by step, the folly of hunting for diseases, disease cause by implements of the senses. So, what he's saying, the old school considers these the cause, the, these bacteria as the cause, but we'll be able to show that disease cause is much more subtle, subtle when it's okay, than anything else, than anything that can be shown by microscope. So, you cannot show the original disease. Disease is prior to the bacteria. The person is diseased, that's why the bacteria comes over there, bacteria troubles human being. Till the human is healthy, there is a synergistic relationship between bacteria and human being. That continues. Everyone helps other and it never causes anything. Unless or until the human is diseased, the bacteria will not going to show any reaction. And this is what he is explaining over there. We will be able to show you by process of reasoning, step by step, the folly, folly manja murkha panacha pravitya, the folly of hunting for disease caused by the implements of senses. So the, this is what they do. If the fever comes, they immediately start checking the blood, they immediately start checking what is the cause of the disease in the form of bacteria, virus, etc., etc. Many times they never get the cause. There is a footnote to first paragraph where Hanuman have made a very important comment. And he explained that uh, over there that this modern medicine or allopathic science is nothing but the theoretic medicine. And this is what he explains. In a note, Hanuman says, the physician's mission is not, however, to construct the so-called system by interweaving empty speculations. Empty speculation was just empty and hypothesis concerning the internal essential nature of the vital processes and the mode in which the disease originates in the invisible interior of the organism, etc. So this he has given in the footnote to the first paragraph. He says that this is not the thing. This is not the thing which is uh, which is happening over there. So he explains over there Exactly, that the disease internally, disease is in, in, happens internally at the dynamic level and it never, never, never can be seen with the naked eyes or even by the microscope. And they go on hunting it for years together. They go on finding it out for years together. And this is what he explains that they go on finding it out, the theoretic medicine. We know that the, in the present day, people are perfectly satisfied if they can find the name of the disease. They are supposed to have an idea clocked in some wonderful te technicality. And this is, this is the present era. In the present era, everyone likes that if the label is given to their disorder, they are happy. If you would have seen the, today is the Rajesh Karnas, what are uh, they? Uh, there, there was one movie, Anand, and where he has reflected, uh, he was he suffered from cancer and he asked, what is the name of my disease? He asked, my bimari ka naam kya hai? And what he answers? Lymphosarcoma of the intestine. And then he becomes so happy. Yes, what is the good name? 
And this is what the state of the persons at present. They like naming the diseases. These are very, very superficial things because this is not the disease. Labeling the disease with these names is not the disease. We know that in the present day, people are perfectly satisfied if they can find the name of the disease they are supposed to have an idea clocked in some wonderful technicality. An old Irish man walked into clinic one day and after giving his symptoms, said, Doctor, what is the matter with me? The physician answered, Why you have Naxomika? That being his remedy. Whereupon the old man said, Well, I did think I had some wonderful disease or other. And that is an outgrowth of the old-fashioned folly of naming the sickness. And this, this was the method. And this is till today. They give the big, big names to their diseases. And people are happy. They are having the such types of names of the diseases. They are happy that they are having bright disease. They are happy they are labeled by the name of, yes, Wilson's disease. What is this? this Hermann says this is folly. This is a foolish work, naming diseases with such a name and giving a false belief that we know you are disease. But what is there at the end? The answer is we don't have any treatment for it. Hanuman says just naming the disorder is not of any use. What he further says, the physician answered, why you have Naxomika? That being his remedy. Whereupon the old man said, well, I did think I had some wonderful disease or other. And this is an outgrowth of the old-fashioned folly of naming sicknesses. Except in the new few acute diseases, no diagnosis can be made. And no diagnosis need to be made except that the patient is sick. And what he said? Many times it happens, they never get the causes. There are three words which comes again and again. Idiopathic. If it is not there, then they have changed it by the name of psycho mm, somatic. Then later they change no autoimmune. Many times they are not able to reach to the diagnosis. And what Hanuman says, it's better if it if it has been there is no diagnosis. Only understand that the patient is sick. The more one think of the name of disease, so called, the more one is big clouded in the search of, for the remedy. For then the mind is only upon the results of the disease and not upon the image in, expressed in the symptoms. So once you label the disease by certain name, you go on finding that name over there. You forget the man and you again goes with the same mistake done by allopath and you look towards the pathology, name of the pathology. And this is what you say. You should not focus the names of the diseases, the diagnosis over there, but just focus on the human being. Just find it out what is wrong with that man and which is expressing it in the form of symptoms. And that man, which is disturbed, which you have to treat. A patient of 25 years of age with the gravest inheritances, with 20 pages of symptoms and with only symptom to furnish an image of sickness is perfectly curable if treated in time. What he says? If there is a, 25, a patient of 25 years of age comes with plenty of symptoms, it's wonderful if he has all those symptoms because it is curable, because it is functional. It has been not yet converted into the pathology. After being treated, there will be no pathological results. He will go to the old stage without any tissue destruction. So till the patient's disease is at the functional level, you can cure that disease perfectly. And this is what he wants to explain. After being treated, there will be no pathological results. He will go to the old age without any pathological, uh, any tissue destruction. But the pa that patient, if not cured at that early age, will take on disease results in accordance with circumstances of his life and his, his inheritances. So if you don't treat that with the help of homeopathy, then that patient will become more and more disturbed and more and more during and gradually the tissue changes develops. Then 
there will be a pathology. If he is a chimney sweep, he will he will be subject to the this is peculiar to chimney sweep. If she is a housemaid, she will be subject to diseases peculiar to the housemaids. So, depending on that individual, it takes the form. So, disease is prior to it. If you would have not treated at the functional level, then it gradually changes and it depends upon the susceptibility of that human being. It depends upon that um, constitution of the human being. It depends upon that predisposition of myosome of that patient. And ultimately, it reflects it reflected in certain specific parts. If he is a chimney sweep, he will be subject to the diseases peculiar to chimney sweeps. If he, she is a housemaid, she will be subject to diseases peculiar to housemaids, etc. That patient has the same disease he had when he was born. This array of symptoms represents the same state before the pathological conditions have been formed as after. And it is true if he has liver disease or brain disease or any of the many tissue changes that they call disease. You must go back and procure these very symptoms before you can make a prescription. So what he says? These are the symptoms with which he has started, which are at the functional level. And if, he, if not treated in time, they are converted at the cellular changes, tissue changes. So if you want to find it out remedy, don't look towards that tissue change. Don't look towards that cell. Just find it out what were the symptoms at the time of uh, when it was functional in origin. So there were many symptoms before pathology. Once pathology develops, symptoms vanishes. Then patient comes, doctor, I have gangrene, but no symptoms. Before that, there might be many symptoms. Doctor, there is severe burning. I, I cannot uh, keep this for a single minute. I have to keep it in cold water. There are many, many symptoms, many modalities, many sensations that you can get before a pathology develops. Once pathology develops, the symptoms vanishes. And then it becomes rather difficult job to find it out the right remedy for that. So what he says, it is always better to go for the symptoms which are present, which were present before the pathology has been developed. Prescribing for the results of disease causes changes in the results of disease, but not in the sickness, except to hurry its progress. So if you treat the results of the disease, for example, a patient comes to you with CA breast, there is tumor inside the breast and it is found malignant. And what do you do? You remove the breast, mastectomy. What happens? He patient is in a uh, thought that he has cured, but within span of six months or um, eight months, the patient develops again immediately a some metastasis somewhere inside the brain, inside the lungs, inside the bones, etc. And then they say, now your disease has spread. How it has been spread? Because you have not treated the original disease. You have not treated the disease. You have treated the result of the disease by removing that result. And because of which the metastasis happens to be there, because of that metastasis develops. So you have not cured the original disease which because of which this has been developed. And this happens with the old school. We will see peculiarities running through the families. In the beginning is the this primary state that which is presented only by signs and symptoms. And the whole family needs the same remedy or a cognate of that remedy. But in one member of the family, the condition runs to the cancer, in another to the thesis, etc. But all from the same common foundation. These form fundamental condition, which underlies the disease of the human race must be understood. Without a knowledge of this, it will be impossible to understand the acute miasmatic disorder, which will be considered later. So what he says, if there are many, many patients inside one family in, in the form of some acute manifestations. And if you don't treat them properly on the basis of law of stimulus, and if you try to suppress it by local means or by some allopathic medication, then after some time, those reflect it in a different manner. 
In some cases, the disease has gone to the colon cancer. In some patients, it has developed as a tuberculosis. In some patients, it has developed as a some liver pathology. Depending upon their susceptibility, depending upon their myasm, depending upon their constitution, then it has taken a grave form. So it never remains same. But original foundation was same. If you would have treated when the disease was acute, then it would have not converted into the chronic form. It was, it might have cured at that same time. But these problems arise once if you try to suppress those acute disorders. It is well known fact that some breed persons are susceptible to one thing and some to the other, another. If any epidemic causes comes on upon the land, only a few come down with it. Why are some protected and why do others take it? These things must be settled by the doctrines of homeopathy. Idiosyncrasies must be accounted for. Many physicians waste their time searching after things that make searching of the, after the things that make their patients sick. The sick man will be made sick under every circumstance, whereas the healthy man could lie in a lazaretto. Lazaretto means a hospital for treatment of contagious diseases. Lazaretto. Contagious diseases at a hospital. Lazaretto. So what he says? It is well-known fact that some persons are susceptible to one thing and some are another. And that's why in, if an epidemic happens, everyone never suffers. Only those who are susceptible will going to get that disease. Otherwise, the rest of them always remains in the health, healthy state. Even if that fellow goes to that specific hospital where such types of patients are admitted, still he, he survives. He never have a disease. Because, because it is not the just a bacteria or virus that will going to cause the disease. The secondary causes in the form of constitution, in the form of susceptibility, in the form of myism are very important. If they satisfy, then and then only primocosm or we can cause the disease. Without that, primocosm or we never cause any, any disorder. It is not the principal business of the physician to be hunting in the rivers and the sailors and examining the food we eat for the cause of disease. It is his duty to hunt out the symptoms of the sickness until a remedy is found that covers the disorder. That remedy, which will produce unhealthy man similar symptoms, is the master of situation, is the necessary antidote, will overcome the sickness, restore the will and understanding to order and cure the patient. What is saying? It is not necessary to go and find out what, what has caused the disease. What food you have taken, what whether it was spoiled or everything. Because it is it is not the thing which will going, going to guide you towards the remedy. What guide will guide you towards the remedy is just finding it out what symptomatology you present. It is too important. If a patient comes to you all of a sudden having severe vomiting and diarrhea just because he has consumed some food and he started getting that and there is associated very severe thirst. He is thirsty, asking for sips of water again and again associated with much restlessness. So these are the symptoms with which he has presented. It doesn't matter whether it is cholera, whether it is mm, any mm, food poisoning, he, he, you know that what he pre is presenting and he is presenting his symptomatology which will guide you towards the right remedy. So, his duty is to find it out exactly the totality which will guide you towards the remedy instead of finding it out such material cause because which will not give you any idea towards the any remedy. And we are on the concluding part of the chapter, but it, I think it will not finish in today's session. We'll continue with it tomorrow. We'll stop over here and we'll continue with it tomorrow. My suggestion is that understand those concepts, which are very, very important, very essential to understand. Every concept, whatever he has mentioned by him, are very, very essential. And those one should not miss. So... 
we'll con we'll continue with this tomorrow and one more announcement for all of you for tomorrow those who are interested in learning the materia medica from tomorrow onwards at 9:30 i will going to take allen's key notes uh, and the remedies from a series first uh, one by one so those will be useful for everyone for the students as well as for the practitioner and i will going to share uh, daily um, from monday to friday one remedy per day and that will be useful for everyone so that will be a practical aspect of the understanding materia medica and it will be useful for the students of homeopathy do how to um, uh, how to keep materia medica in the mind which are the symptoms which are necessary one should have in their mind if lmc by is asked what is the what is the key of the lmc by if the anti crude is asked what is the key of anti crude so it should remain in your mind thoroughly so that session will be there right from tomorrow uh, at 9:30 pm for half an hour on zoom those who are interested do join it's free not having any fees so thank you being there we'll meet again tomorrow at 6 o'clock as well as night at 9:30 so that's all for today we'll meet tomorrow thank you